Hello everyone and welcome to the Constructed Criticism Network. This network is here to help you improve in Magic the Gathering at every level. From Popper Leagues to Top 1000 Mythic, we've got you covered. If you want to hear the entire network, head on over to our sponsor at PureMTGO.com where you can hear each and every show, each and every week, and check out their sponsor, MTGO Traders, and tell them that the CCMTG Network sent you. Now sit back, enjoy the show, from YouTube, podcasts, and more, here's this week's episode from ConstructedCriticism.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Neat... Oh, man, I I definitely am going to leave this in, because I almost said constructive criticism, and then I was like, wait, I'm not doing that podcast. What's the name of my podcast? Then I said my nerd podcast, but everybody, this is Mythic Cast, and I'm joined by Mythic Michaela. <laughs> Look, my name is even your hint to what podcast it, you're recording. It's so true. The thing is, I used to do all three of them at, like, at the same time. Like, I was the host of all three at once. So I'm glad that's not true anymore, because I could not do that. Uh, you know where you can listen to most of those podcasts, though, is over at our sponsor, over on Pure MTGO. Um, shout out to them. I think it's super awesome that they support the network the way that they do. If you are trying to get into Pioneer, like so many people on Twitter, um, you know, obviously our listeners are, are mostly arena players, but... It's a great place to, like, you know, if, if if there's not an arena tournament that you want during the weekend, maybe you want to jump into a standard challenge. Uh, and their sponsor over at MTJ Traders is a great place to pick up your cards. Um, I know I know for me, like, I plan on starting to do more standard challenges as soon as my daughter's old enough that I can kind of justify more weekends playing Magic. And it's just a great place to do it. If you just want arena stuff, though, check on over to our other sponsor at Grey Viking Games. Use the code MYTHIC10 for 10% off of everything in the store. The new set just dropped, Michaela. I actually haven't redeemed my packs for the code that you do. What is the code? Do you know what the code is? It's got to be play. Is it play AFR? Or play D&D. &D. Is it play D&D? &D? I haven't done it yet. But if you didn't get a chance to go to a paper pre-release, you're missing out on those six packs that come in those pre-release kits, which you can pick up over at our sponsor at, uh, you know, Grey Viking Games, along with some sick, sick cosmetics that maybe aren't in the store right now. Uh, I actually should check out Lions. Can real, real side tangent rant for a second, Michaela. Is it okay if I rant on our podcast? Absolutely. I am so mad about what they just did. So they, they made the lands that for the new set special lands. And so because of that, they have become my default lands on arena. And you, the only way to change your default land on arena is to buy new lands because you can't set a default land. Normally when a new set drops, the lands don't aren't like they don't change because you know, they're just basics, but because these were so different, it somehow defaulted to them. So I lost my, my, uh, packs, uh, my PAX lands is my default lands, and I, I don't like the uh, the uh, is it unhinged the ones that are like completely borderless and stuff. I do like the Nyx lands, so but I already bought them, so I can't buy them again to change them back. Arena, you need to just let me select what my default lands are. I agree. It's so tilting. Because these lands are so ugly, Michaela. Like, they look so bad. Ugh. I'll, although I will say sometimes, you know, I have to be able to select my colors because sometimes I like to play, like, one type of land in one color and then a different type of land in another color. And apparently the bottom is... Oh, yeah, just let me select which basic I want. Let me make it my default. Like, I really like the, the planes, the Zendikar planes, like, the floating, mm -hmm. like, rocks. Like, I love that. And I want most of my other ones to be Nyx ones. I don't know. Uh, if you want to hear me rant like that more often, become a patron. We could probably make that a benefit. Go over to patreon.com slash mythiccast. Um, if we hit a certain number level, maybe we'll add Spencer rants on the podcast about things that bug him. I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, hey, we, we can add Michaela rants too. But. Oh, man. You actually owe me one. I do. What, what? I don't even remember what it's about. What was it uh, about? Top five something about a toddler. Oh, yeah, top five favorite things about having a toddler. you yeah. got to do that at the end of the show. We'll do oh, that at, great. We'll do great. that at the end. You think about that. You think about that. 
Uh, yeah, but yeah, head on over to patreon.com slash mythicast to support the show directly. The show will always be free, but we appreciate anything that you are willing to do. Uh, we have a Mythic Desk coming next week. They were going to come this week. They were backpacking. Uh, but we're actually going to be talking about this. Uh, they, they got Mythic in Limited. So we'll be having a limited Mythic Guest talking about Michaela, the worst draft format of all time. Um, <laughs> ooh, she does not agree. What? Yeah, what AFR saying? is the worst draft format I've ever played. Ooh, ooh that's, it's a uh, hot take. Did you, did you ever play, uh, what was it? I think it was M12, I really did not like. I played I played all of the core sets since M11. There was one that was, like, really aggressive, and I remember the only way you could ever win was drafting goblins. And I Interesting. It. Didn't all those have Vampire Nighthawk, though? Couldn't you just take a Nighthawk? No. <laughs> what? What set are we talking about? I don't... The, uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm thinking of M13. Yeah, that might have been M13. I think this was M12, but I just was, like, not into it. This was, like, I don't know, the, ti- the Titans the Titans were crazy in some of those formats. Like, you had, like, an Inferno Titan and stuff, so. My ideal limited format involves Mind Control and Baneslayer Angel. I feel like, I feel like that's the same thing as a Titan. Like that's. Well, and Titans, too. I mean, those are Yeah, sure, formats, sure. I'm just uh, that's baseline for my ideal format. But we're going to tell you a new way to become our next Mythic guest here later on in the episode. But today we are going to talk about, I've been hinting at it on Twitter, it's been on the screen for a while, I think for a couple episodes, they want to talk about hashtag ready for battle. So, this is where Spencer is going to read his screen a little bit, but what is hashtag ready for battle? So, when we, when I was, you know, as, as we kind of look at the show and what we want. Yeah, I think it's important for us to understand like what are what is our goal? What are we trying to provide for the listener, right? And you know, why why would we add a hashtag to that? Why would why would we you know, do this type of stuff? You know, what value do we think doing something like this brings to the show? And I think that there's there's quite a bit that this does. Um, you know, bringing a ha- Creating an official hashtag for the show uh, allows us to more easily engage with listeners on Twitter um, that maybe don't want to just be tagging us when they get mythic, but actually just want to engage with us and with, honestly, each other. Like, if you use the hashtag, um, you know, rather than having to look at things... I, I don't even... Can you even look at people who just mentioned somebody? Like, I don't think you can, right? So, if you wanted, if you wanted to engage with another listener on Twitter... You'd have to follow them because they follow us, and and that's just kind of, I don't know, it's kind of awkward. And I think that creating some level of engagement for listener-to-listener interaction, make it easy for Michaela and I to find people who are listening and engage with the things that they're doing, it, it, it's, it's, it's helpful for us in a lot of ways, and I think it's helpful for the listeners in a lot of ways. And also, the hashtag kind of aligns with, with our goals, right? Like, we want to help people be ready for battle. So I'm going to read this spiel. Is that okay, Michaela? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, uh, as part of the always improving network, part of our job as a podcast is to help people improve at the game that we love. You know, our main goal in that is to help players achieve myth- mythic on MTG arena and to promote those accomplishments of those players. That's why we invite people who achieve mythic onto the show. Um, because we want, we want to, support you we want to make sure that you understand that you know we we care about this accomplishment we want to share it with others so the question that we kind of ask next is what is the goal of hitting mythic well first of all it's cool michaela you get an awesome badge so that's sweet did you get your badge yet this month (laughs) no not this month it's it's, it's been a while it's been a while uh, I also talked to some people about like what is their goal on ladder um, as I was kind of preparing to bring the show back and one of the things that they talked about and, and I also talked to people who, talk, who grind the SCGs and you know what do they want out of a weekly MTG podcast and I think that the thing that I wanted to highlight is that you know Michaela and I believe that our that our listeners want a podcast that lets them know what to expect on the mythic ladder and to, that helps them improve along improve along the way. 
They want the info that helps them feel prepared, whether it's going into a match on the ladder, whether it's going into an SCG event, or going into, you know, a draft at their local store that, you know, that they've been playing on Arena. They want, they're, they're about to hit those draft tables. They want to feel prepared. And so, in essence, we want to help our, our listeners be ready for battle. So, what is ready for battle to us? And this is, like, a little cheesy, and I know that. But I want to talk about, like, what ready for battle means to me, and what I'm hoping that it will mean for our listeners. And for me, like, hashtag ready for battle means that if, if I'm saying that as I'm going into an event or as I'm preparing for an event, it means that I'm putting in the work. It means that I am showing up not just for a tournament with some deck list that I grabbed off the internet or just, you know, reading the cards in the draft for the first time, but, like, I am essentially putting myself in in the best position that I can to do the best that I can in a given event. What about you, Michaela? Along similar lines, it's for me knowing the work that needs to be done to take it to the next level at the next event. Um, I used, I grew up, I played soccer growing up, and you know we had practice once or twice a week before our next game, and those practices were used to reflect on what, what, where were our weak points last week, and what do we need to improve on going into this week, and what can we expect for this upcoming week. So magic's really not much different from that. Can I ask? You, you mentioned soccer, but I'm curious, what are some other things that you've done in life or in Magic that have helped you feel hashtag ready for battle? Just other things in life? Um, you know, you think about applying for a job, going through the interview process. You're not just going to show up for an interview and just hope it goes well. You're going to go look into what, what am I going to be asked? What can I expect to be asked? Oh, what... And think about, like, reflecting yourself and what your strengths are and what you can bring to that job position, right? So Yeah. What about what about magic? Like, are there other things in magic that you've done that have helped you this way? Yeah, so magic, um, reviewing, reviewing VODs of past games is a great way to reflect on, you know, what's going on. On the week before, for me, I like to go read articles about maybe a deck that I'm interested in playing that week. Um, listen to the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's really similar. I'm, I'm a huge... I'm a huge proponent of, like, reflection in a lot of ways. Uh, in, like, my, my personal life, I, I think that, you know, just like just like with the always improving from the, the network and constructive criticism, I think that I also like to be prepared for stuff. You know, if I'm going into an interview, you're, you know, researching... You, you mentioned job interviews, right? Like researching the company and like what are, what are their values? What are they looking for in a candidate? Why would they align with what I'm doing? It's not just work though. Like you know, when having a daughter, I did a lot of research about you know, what 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 could be different than my son. I did you know the same thing is true. We actually for my wife's uh, for Mother's Day this year, my wife asked for um. Toddler, toddler training videos for us like us as a couple like how can we better i don't know if you guys know this by the way michaela will get into this in his podcast but toddlers are freaking hard like it's like having a teenager that doesn't speak complete sentences all the time and like can't coherently express themselves even if they wanted to so toddlers can be really difficult so like you know you really have to be ready for that battle um i but i, I think that Buy a car. It, <laughs> you have to be ready for battle to buy a car. <laughs> it's true. It's true. There's there's so much in life that this equates to, which is why I liked this. Um, and in Magic, it, it's very much the same thing. Um, I, th- I think that there are lots of tournaments that I didn't, you know, I, I was not prepared for. I was, I just didn't put in the effort. I didn't put in the research. And it's it's funny because... I think what this can mean for different people, especially in Magic, can be different. I think that how you want to prepare, you know, if you don't want to grind the ladder, that's something we talked about early on when when Michaela joined the cast, is that sometimes 
Maybe you're maybe you're just playing events and then you're grinding SEGs to, to qualify and meet your goals. You know, understanding what your goals are. And then what preparation needs to go into achieving those goals is really important. And I think that, for me, that's been some, a learning experience. What value do we think that this adds to the listeners and to the show? I'm going to go first on this. I think this gives the show a lot of purpose and a lot of focus. I think that having a tagline and kind of a vision statement on what we're trying to bring for the listeners makes it easy for us to bring that to them. If our goal is to make people hashtag ready for battle, when Michaela and I sit down for a podcast meeting, whether it's about what kind of Patreon benefits do we want to offer people, what kind of episodes do we want to make, if I know that my goal is to get the listeners ready for their next event, ready for the Mythic Ladder, ready for all of those things, it then, all of the noise that can come from creating content starts to dissipate and Michaela and I can really focus. I think that's the biggest, the biggest value that this will bring. Um, I like yours though. Why don't you, yours, yours is also really important. Will you talk about that for me? Yeah. You know, I hope we're uh, helping listeners gain tools to, you know, reflect on their own process. Uh, whether it be, we talk about how we did some reflection that week or even posing questions to them that they might be able to look into that week. And then, also just sharing the things that we've seen in our preparation throughout the week and that listener can add to their arsenal of knowledge. Yeah. I, the thing is, it's so funny too, because you, you'll all the time hear or not hear, you'll see people on Twitter talking about like, this is what the ladder looks like. And it like doesn't align with your experience. And one of the nice things, and one of the reasons I actually wanted a co-host for this podcast, and I wanted to scale back the number of guests to like once a month is because I wanted I wanted more perspectives on what's going on. Because um, on my grind to Mythic this month, I ran into, I think, nothing but, like, Sultai and Demir. And then we get to Mythic, and now it's all Naya, Winota, and Mono Red. And also, like, the SEGs just happened, and so... Well, go ahead. Oh, I just gonna say I don't understand why people see that Naya Winota deck. Oh, we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. By the way, <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna discuss it. But I I think that like the thing that the thing that I hope that this brings is it brings that brings us and those listeners exactly the kind of that I hope that what Michaela and I just said basically do a fusion dance. We're like we're focusing on us getting ready for battle, transferring that information as to like what we did, what we can do to the, to the listeners. And then you're internalizing that or we're posing something for you to internalize. And it helps you gain that same level of focus. Absolutely. So with that being said, we are adding a new segment to the podcast. The segment is hashtag ready for battle, uh, where every week we'll talk about the things that we've done during the week. Um, when we don't have a guest, maybe we'll maybe we'll ask the guest too. It kind of just depends on the guest. Because just like what what we've done that week to to achieve this, it, it is really similar. I, I already know I'm gonna like how is this different from the always improving segment that you did on um on on constructive criticism. But I actually think that the focus is different because with with always improving, it's like it it was much more. This is what I did to try and improve at Magic this week. Whereas this is like goal oriented. It's like, this is what I did to, like, I, I I knew I was doing the podcast this week. The podcast was on this. This is how I prepared for it. I had a 1K. This is, this is what I did to be prepared for that. Uh, stuff like that. With that being said, uh, let's, let's talk about hashtag ready for battle. We're going to do it right now. We're going to have our first segment of it. And I'm going to go first. Uh, I knew I was doing this podcast. I knew I was going to have this segment. And I had played so much mono green, Michaela. My win percentage is, like, astounding with that deck. Um, I was top 500 mythic. Every time I logged in, I would, you know, decay, play a couple games, get back to top 500 mythic, right? Well, <laughs> uh, I don't have the goal of, like, qualifying 
for the the PDQ right now, just because I have a newborn, right? So for me, I was like, okay, well, I should play more decks so that when we go back to standard, or if we go back to standard for this podcast, that I have a, a deeper understanding. So I played Sultai, um, I played some some Rogues. Rogue still sucks, you should not play it. I don't think it has a single good matchup in this format. Um, I did not play Mono Red. I plan on trying that, because I think that that deck might be good right now. But I did play a l- I have a weakness for Lotus Cobra. I played against Naya Winota, crushed it a bunch of times, thought I could build it better, um, took the SEG list, made a couple changes. I'm going to tell you something, Michaela. I'm going to tell this to the listeners. That deck sucks. Like, I am like 92% mythic right now, I'm sure. Like, I, I plummeted. And uh, here's the thing. I hit the bad side of variance. Like, until today when I was playing the deck, when I had a winning record with it, uh, I I don't know that I had drawn more one, Minota, one Winota per match. Like, I just could not draw them. But I also think the deck is not set up... Res- like, the Boros Winota deck that we did a deck tech on, and that I... On this podcast, I think, from, like, you know, almost a year ago now, th- that I got Mythic with, that deck had, like tons of resiliency like you did not need to it was just a good boros aggro deck and you didn't need to draw winota to win if you don't draw winota in this naya deck this deck sucks like it's just a bunch of one ones and one twos with like this impossible to cast four drop that also doesn't make your one like i'm not attacking a bunch of one ones into a bunch of two twos with like even if my guys have double strength they'll still die the deck is so bad what about high fives? Oh my gosh. Five. It's so, it's so, so like you just sit there because so, so many games just, you sit in a stalemate and you either die or you draw Winota because eventually somebody's going to attack and it's either going to be you because you drew a Winota or it's going to be your opponent because they've just eventually developed a board that doesn't care if you draw a Winota. So that was Spencer rant number two. I don't know if it's a rant. Like, it. I, I mean, maybe it is. I could have gone way further on, on Demir. But I, I think the important lesson here is, like, I've started, I started getting much more aggressively with the deck. Like, I realized that you basically can't win with that Winota. I think the bigger problem is that even, like, the, the, the creatures are so small, so easy to disrupt. Like, Stomp is so prevalent that any time you're on the draw, and and the mono green decks are starting to switch to Gruul, like Gruul Adventures, so like they're already playing Stomp again. Uh, it, it's just really hard to keep like, you know, a one one, a two one, and a a one two in play to get an early Winota. And even if you get the early Winota, half the time the creature that you were going to get the early Winota in play with is tapped, unless it's a Lotus Cobra. So it, it's just rough. But I did play a ton of this deck. Um, I do have an updated list that I think is a little bit better that I will post in the He's a Game Media Discord. Um, and then I also did a bunch of drafting, uh, specifically for our podcast next week. Um, and I have decided that there are two good colors, uh, two mediocre colors, like not good, and then one actually bad color in this format. And it might have the most color disparity of strength of any format I've ever played. So, what about you? What did you do to get ready for battle this week? You did way better than me. You, like, actually played a tournament and stuff. Wow. Okay, I had a crazy busy week last week. And to top it off, I found out the the DreamHack MTG Arenas uh, streamer tournament was on Sunday, which I didn't know about until, like, Thursday or Friday. Uh, so, you know, good on me. I probably should have known about that ahead of time. So anyways, I did, I was busy. I didn't have a ton of time to prepare. Um, actually had a swarm of Bellerant players in my house for the weekend. <laughs> That's another story. Were they anyways, just playing, were they just playing with your husband or, or are you playing with them? There was a Bellerant tournament in Nebraska, so. Oh, and you were just like hosting people? Yeah. You're such a sweetheart. Yeah, That's, I, That's the most MPG player thing to do, like. <laughs> I, I host I host people 
I don't remember. We had people at my house like right before quarantine that they were just, I was, they were just hey, I'm coming to Utah for this tournament. Can I stay at your house? It's like, yeah, whatever. Like, you know, there's a couch for you. That's, I feel like that's ingrained into us, and it's not normal. <laughs> Look, I own a house, so I can offer people a free place to stay. Like, right. this is, like, my entire reason to have a guest bedroom. Like, Sure. Anyways. Um, so, not a ton of time. So, Saturday, I'm like, I need to register a guest tonight. What are we going to do? I'm not, you know, I'm playing draft when I've been online and, you know, not jamming storybook brawl like every other Magic player in existence right now. <laughs> so I, my, my plan, I'm like, okay, I'm loading on time. What are we going to do? And I started looking over a standard deck list on MTG Melee. And I was seeing a lot of teamer out there, um, a lot of mono green. And I'm, I really don't enjoy playing with, like the mono green deck. I knew it was good because a lot of people were doing very well with it. Um, and the teamer list is that Luca version. I just, it, that wasn't the adventures list that I had been playing prior. And I just, I wasn't feeling really comfortable with registering something like that. So, yeah. So those were kind of the two decks that I was like seeing that were really, really prevalent. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, is it dragons was just very strong, you know, a month or so ago. And why, why am I not seeing that pop up a whole lot? And then I finally saw one of the satellites. Someone did take first with the deck. So I decided to look at that list. Um, I kept looking a little bit too. I saw like, an Abzan blink list took first and second in a satellite, and I yelled across the house to my husband, hey, tell me not to play Abzan blink. To get that one out of the way. <laughs> text text me. Me and Tom will tag team that next time. Don't. <laughs> don't, don't play bad decks, even if they take first and second. <laughs> yeah, so, so fun fact, why Naya Winoda also did that. Don't play. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> So, yeah, I just really like this as a Dragon's deck. I knew it had Gamma versus the Teamer list, and I was kind of looking. I'm like, I, I think we can have a reasonable matchup with them screen. I don't really know how this plays out because it's not a matchup I've played, but just, you know, kind of doing some theoretical thinking about this. Yeah, I think I, I think it has a good, I think it has a good green matchup. Yeah, I think so, too. So I looked at this, I looked at this uh, first place at the Melee list for Visit, and I'm like, okay, I like this. I don't understand these subway and look at the face of the cycle. Let's get rid of these. And then I made a few other changes. I think I cut down a Mac. Uh, Ma- Magma Opus sure. cut one of those out of the list, and then I added one of the uh, deal two damage or six damage if it's a green creature spell. Sure, and Burning Hands. Which, yeah, which I was actually really happy with the decision. Probably would go up to two. Did you um, play the um? The, I the only way I know how to explain this is like Dragon Lord Ojitai, the 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 blue legendary dragon. Yes. Okay. The, yeah, the uh, Dracoseth or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I played three of those in the list. Cool. So, um, so yeah, so that was how I went. I'm like, I don't have a ton of time. <laughs> I really don't even have time to like play this deck, but let's, let's see what's out there. Let's kind of come with some ideas. So, you know, form a sideboard, makes a couple main deck changes, and then submit this list. Well, I didn't know this was a closed deck tournament <laughs> either. So that made my life a little bit more interesting that day too. Uh, <laughs> What was the last time that you played the closed deck tournament? Uh, I have, like, I have not played in a, other than, like, sealed, one round of a sealed pre-release, I, I, I don't know. Because, like, all I've played is SCG satellites, so it's yeah. like... And they're all with the deck. Yeah, deck yeah. Deck list, and I'm, so yeah. it's, like, a little wild. Um... But yeah, so, you know, I reached this deck that I had done a lot of testing against for VML, so I was familiar with it that way, and I just, I thought it was... Wait, is VML open? I guess it is, because they tweet about it during the match. That makes sense. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, it is. okay, yeah. Um, so, you know, that, that was how I ended up on this deck list. Just a little bit of time, uh, look at MTG Melee, get an idea, and then take some prior knowledge. So I ended up... Um, Sneaking into top eight in seventh place, which I did not expect to happen. I had already ended the stream. And then I made it all the way to second place, beating Teamer Adventures three times along the way, which was a deck that I wanted to beat. And I also wanted to beat Model Green. I did lose to Model Green, but that was on the um, expressive iteration, not hitting my fourth land drop. So that, that wasn't on me. <laughs> Wait, I thought that I thought that card was the better version of Gross Spire. Oh, you, I see you. It was like the growth spiral that sucks in that in that moment. I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah. 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 When you're on three with growth spiral and then you uh, you draw a card, not a land. 
Yeah. Draw a card, not a land. Gross Spyro, miss a land, concede. Yeah, I, I played those games. Yeah, same thing. So, yeah, I made it all the way second. Um, ended up losing to the Team or Adventures deck in finals. Uh, the Luca version. It was, it was one of those games I was very happy. I had the um, the six damage spell because I yeah, yeah. that spell was great in that matchup. I think it was really great against Hanna Brain. It was a, Did you get to kill a, the, the serpent with it? No, I was holding it for that. I was like, <laughs> I was, like so low in life. I killed it on something else. Then I put it like hard cast the serpent next to Oh, me. that sucks. <laughs> That sucks. I, was, like, playing so well. I actually didn't think of the fact that it kills. It kills. Is it Chroma? Yes. A coma. Coma. I did not think that it of the fact that it kills Coma before the the uh, the stuff comes down. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah, that was. I was so frustrated. I was like, I held on to it so long as I could. Well, uh, if you'll shoot me an updated deck list, I'll put it in the show notes for the listeners. I'll put yeah. a goldfish link in in the show notes for the listeners. I, I, I got to watch a little bit of your stream. It seemed like I, – I, I text this to you, but we can talk about it on stream but, or on the podcast. But it seemed like you really dialed in, and I I was impressed. So Yeah, I was very focused during my games. I was a little, like, chaotic crazy in between just because – I don't know. I was in a weird mood, but maybe that's a good thing. When I get, like, super hyped up and excited about magic, then – This is this is a kind of tangen- tangentially – I can't talk. Uh, related to what we're talking about right now with Ready for Battle. But as as I was writing these show notes, listening to podcasts, preparing for this podcast, thinking about, you know, how many shots got in arms the last couple weeks, I know that obviously people are scared that CDC just changed stuff. Um, but, you know, we had more shots in arms the last two weeks than I think the rest – of the time combined, if I read that correctly. Wow. Um, at least first shots. So that, that could mean that, you know, while, while what's happening right now is bad, you know, we, we could be getting pretty close to, to normal. See it, you know, in about, what is that? Six weeks, something like that. A little bit more than that. And because of that, like, I don't know, my fire for magic is like a lot higher. Did you feel that during this tournament that like both you felt, more invested in magic during this tournament than maybe you had been during quarantine. And then also maybe your opponents were doing that and it, kind of that rising tide feeling. Um, I definitely felt like very invested in this tournament. I think when I have chosen to play magic events over like the past six months, they've been things that I've wanted to play. Sure. You know, I, I alluded to, I have not hit mythic in a while and that's just been out of a, I don't, I, don't want to I get it. You you got you got into the, you got onto the show that that you know is about hitting mythic, and then I started hitting mythic instead of playing events. So you stopped. We got a flip flop. No, I'm just. <laughs> no, oh, it's. I got, I got BML. I hey, hey, I agree with you for what it's worth. That I don't think playing ladder is valuable if you mm-hmm. don't care about. Like I just, I don't think the value's there, and. It's funny, like, I am sudden. one of the reasons that, like, I, over the last, I don't know, three to whatever months that I've focused so much on Hating Mythic is, like, I had, I want, I wanted to get over my ladder anxiety. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, I still, I, like, I play Smash pretty regularly, for those who don't know, Smash Brothers Ultimate, and, like, I'm going to get Elite Smash with my main, uh, here, here, probably in August, just to do it like uh, there's no value other than doing it for me and it's not like i hadn't gotten mythic a bunch of times on on magic but i just wanted to prove to myself that i could do it whenever i wanted to and i and i did that over the last you know four months or whatever and and now that i've proven that and i i've i've shown the listeners that i've you know got i don't know there's also like such a big break for me in magic that it was important to me but I think one of the things that what your event did, like watching your stream did, is it kind of reminded me like what I love about Magic, which is that competition aspect. And um, you know, today during today during um, uh, for those who don't know, I work for uh, Children's Miracle Network, who um, owns the Extra Life um, uh, product or brand. 
And, you know, they talked about Magic the Gathering today. And, you know, I got to... I got to say, like, I am actually a two-time state champion in Magic the Gathering, and people, you know, started talking to me about Magic and stuff like that. I think that I think that we're, like, in a really interesting place in Magic. I know that there's, like, a lot of doom and stuff, but I hope that if there's one thing that this episode of this podcast brings to people, Michaela, it's that there is going to be events that you're going to care about, that you're going to want to prepare for, and, you know, I don't, I don't think anybody has ever played Magic the Gathering because they wanted to make a bunch of money playing Magic the Gathering. I think we play it to challenge ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I always say I'm competition, the people, and the travel. That's always been... <laughs> yeah, hopefully we do, do, do that last part soon because... It's like, I miss PTUs a lot. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I just want to sleep eight people in a hotel room. Come on. Yeah, I actually... God, to I be, love that in the last decade. It's so funny. I, like, bought a blow-up, like, an electronic blow-up mattress that you, like, plug into the wall just so that I could have my own bed when they announced PTQs were coming back. I went to two, two, two PTQs. They then changed the way PTQs work again. Like, it's all... It's all crazy. Uh... Thank you for doing this episode with me, Michaela. Uh, if, if you want to listen to the rest of the CCMTG network, head on over to constructorcritism.com. You can learn to draft with Sam Black. You can uh, you know, learn about Constructed with SEG Grinders, Mason Clark, and Abe Stein. If you're a parent like Michaela and myself, you've got MTG uh, Homeward Path to, to talk about being a hashtag MTG dad, MTG mom, MTG parent. If you're a Popper fan... We have the number one, the number one popper podcast for MTG in column and knowledge. You can find me at Spencer Third and H. You can find Michaela at Mythic Michaela. And you can find you everywhere that way, by the way. Like, you, you really scored on the, the branding there. Michaela's not a common name. <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's fair. You can find the podcast at Arena Mythic Cast. You can tweet at us with hashtag ready for battle or just tweet us when you hit mythic where we will continue to look for mythic guests every month I don't out on a joke there. oh what was that Michaela's not a common name it's a mythic name Woo! we're gonna leave that in the <laughs> podcast thank you everybody so much for listening don't forget to check out our sponsors check out the patreon and we hope that this podcast helped you become a little bit more hashtag ready for battle Bye, everybody. Did you want to say goodbye, Michaela? Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's staying in the show, too. <laughs> I'm a mess. I'm sorry. It's late. It's fine. We're recording not in a normal time. Good night. Good night.